Good morning. Good morning, good morning, greater shallow. And to all the saints of God, it is a blessing to be in God's house one more time. Paul, speaking unto his son in the ministry, Timothy, tells him how we ought to operate, behave ourselves in the house of God. He says in the very first letter, third chapter in the 16th verse, he says, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles and believed on in the world. And then he's received up into heaven. The Bible says he's now seated at the right hand side of the Father. And he's interceding for you and I. He's praying that no soul be lost. Today we want to celebrate that someone will cry out, how must I be saved? Hallelujah. This is our call to worship. My, 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 my. Good morning, Queen of Shiloh. It's time to praise the Lord. Raise your hand if you think so. Come on.
y'all hear this choir? Open your mouth and say so. If you love the Lord, open your mouth and say so.
the Lord, everybody. Amen. Hallelujah. He's worthy of all the praise. Amen. Let's just give the Lord a hand praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. Would you please join me in reciting our mission and vision statement for our visitors? It's on the screen. Amen. The mission of the Greater Shallow Missionary Baptist Church is to reach, teach, and baptize throughout the world, beginning in our community, fulfilling the Great Commission by the power and presence of the Holy Spirit until Jesus returns. We will fulfill this mission through evangelism, discipleship, ministry, fellowship, and worship. The results will be spiritual, numeric, ministry, and mission growth. Remember always that the Word of God says that where there is no vision, the people perish. Our scripture reading today is entitled Peace, and it's found in John, the 16th chapter, verses 32 to 33, 1427, Ephesians 2, 14 through 17, and Philippians 4, 7 through 9. And it reads, Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet, I am not alone, because the Father is with me. I leave with you my peace I give unto you hallelujah not as the world giveth give I unto you let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid having abolished in his flesh the enmity even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, but to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. And came and preached peace to you which were far off and to them that were nigh. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, hallelujah, <laughs> whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, hallelujah, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things, amen, all together. Those things which you have both heard and learned and received and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Praise the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Good morning, Greater Shiloh family and friends, and thank you for worshiping with us today. Today is Building Fund Sunday. Please prepare your special offering for our capital projects. Please join the Intercessory Prayer Ministry on tomorrow and every Monday morning for prayer at 6 o'clock a.m. Call 848-220-3300 and enter access code 796525 pound sign to join. The Cherub Land Choir will rehearse on Thursday, May 19th at 6 o'clock p.m. and the Youth Choir at 6.30 p.m. Please contact Sister Sarah Brown at sarahb55ann at gmail.com for any questions. Cornerstone Revitalization Foundation presents Music in the Park featuring Alvin Garrett and the Cats and an award-winning guest choir Sunday, May 22nd from 3 o'clock p.m. to 6 o'clock p.m. at Roosevelt Park on Highway 150 in Bessemer, Alabama. This event is free to the public. 
Greater Shiloh would celebrate all of our graduates from pre-K to post-graduate on Sunday, May 29th during the 8 o'clock worship service with special recognition and seating. You may wear your cap, gown, stoles, honor cords, etc. if you desire. There will also be special recognition on our social media platforms at 3 o'clock p.m. Please submit the following to be included. A picture of the graduate does not necessarily have to be cap and gown, but should be a headshot. First and last name of the graduate, the grade they are graduating from, and the name of the current school. If known or desired, you can provide names of the next school or postgraduate activity being planned. Please submit all of your request information to Sister Catrice Murray at gsbc at greatershiloh.org no later than Sunday, May 22nd, and your service attendance confirmation to Catrice Murray as well by Wednesday, May 25th to ensure adequate reserve seating. Online registration is now available on our website at greatershiloh.org for a financial literacy workshop sponsored by Greater Shiloh and Avadian Credit Union on Saturday, June 4th from 9 o'clock a.m. to 12 o'clock noon. Sessions will include checking and savings, understanding credit and investments, and financial planning. There will also be a special session for children ages 14 through 18. Registration is now open for Camp Shiloh, which will run from June 6th through July 22nd. Monday through Friday from 8 o'clock a.m. till 5 o'clock p.m. Registration is $125 and weekly tuition is $125. For more information, contact Sharon Wesley, Camp Director at swesley at greatershiloh.org or at 205-925-9750, extension 403. Vacation Bible School 2022 is June 20th through the 22nd. The theme for this year is Spark Studios, which explores the creativity of God and his image bearers. Early registration for BBS 2022 is now through May 31st. Online registration is available on our website at greatershiloh.org. On-site registration is available today after this service. Please contact Lily Coleman at Lily. 51.coman at gmail.com or Sonya Burns at SonyaInduna at gmail.com for any questions. Remember to tune in each Wednesday at noon for Pastor Wesley's weekly update and midweek inspirational message via Facebook Live. Please like and share with all of your friends on all social media platforms. Greater Shiloh is grateful to everyone for your continued financial support of our church. Check out our website at www.greatershiloh.org forward slash donate to see all the ways you can continue to give digitally. You can also drop off your tithes and offering at the church today or during regular office hours during the week. Have a blessed week, Greater Shiloh. Stay safe and join us again for worship on next Sunday. Good morning, everyone. It's another great day, isn't it, that the Lord has made. Appropriately, our response should be, let us rejoice and be glad in it. Anybody glad to be here today? I'm just glad. I am glad. I am so thankful, man. Sunday morning comes, I can't contain myself. I want to get to church. Hey man, all week long I've been beat up and bumped up and so church is my time. I look forward to being here on Sunday. And I hope you do too. Because you need, you know, when you run out of gas, you need to go to the station so that you can go a little further. Hey Amen. I got a number of things that we need to cover this morning. I want to just begin by saying thank you. For all of the ladies that attended Little Black Dress yesterday, I've seen pictures and I understand that it was a wonderful event. So congratulations to all of you that had an opportunity to share. And you're going to learn you got to stop missing these events. <laughs> because when they come up, but it ain't on. Amen. I got a couple cards. I want to just acknowledge uh, uh, just a couple people here. Uh, cards of thanks first and foremost. 
got a card from Miss Gloria Raglan and her family. God has wonderful ways of letting us know he's up to something good in our lives. And that's thanking you uh, for your love, your condolences, flowers, and encouragement in the loss of her brother, uh, Dennis, uh, that comes from Gloria Ragnar and the Dennis family. Also, we have a card to say thank you so much. And with your recent thoughtfulness still very much in mind, this is meant to bring a thank you of the warmest kind. I really appreciate all acts. God bless and continue to keep you. Come from Sandra Toya. And she also has a love gift to the church in memory of her sister who recently passed, uh, Ms. Phillips. And certainly we thank you for your kindness in remembering your church. In addition to that, congratulations are in order today for several of our dear beloved friends. And I want to just take a moment to acknowledge that. First, uh, one of our young men. Uh, Randall Jackson, where are you, Randall? Are you here in the building this morning? Randall might not be. Oh, he's in the balcony. Hey, okay, yeah, way up there, up top there, yeah. Listen, Randall is a college student at Lane College, and words of congratulations are given to him. You have been selected to attend the Minority Baseball Prospects 2022 HBCU All-Star Game presented by the Henry Louis Aaron Fund on June 1st through the 3rd at Trust Park. In other words, this boy might be given an opportunity to go play pro bat baseball. Hit it out the park, boy. Hit it out the park. And listen, and when you come into your kingdom, remember me. <laughs> Amen. Congratulations are also in order for brother Willie Scott. Willie, come up right here. Willie, our musician, our minister of music. Many of you know that he also serves the Birmingham Public Schools. And recently, at the Birmingham City School Board meeting, Willie was given this award for going above and beyond the call of a duty. And it's that call, that's the name of the award, Above and Beyond the Call of Duty, on May 10th, 2022, to let you know how much we appreciate your hard work in maintaining the grounds at your school and creating beauty for the students, faculty, and staff during the pandemic. Man, what a blessing. Willie works hard. God bless you, man. Congratulations. We're proud of you. They call him Willie Billy. <laughs> Yeah. In, in, addition, in addition to that, I want to uh, personally invite each of you. Uh, I want to announce first, there's a new announcement I need you to hear very carefully. Uh, 28, 2008, I led a tour of about 20 some people from our church to the Holy Land to Israel. And we went and we toured the Holy Land for about 10, 14 days. Well, I'm up to it again for 2023. As a matter of fact, March 23rd, 22nd, 2023, we want to lead another tour to follow the footsteps of the Apostle Paul into Athens, Greece, Philippi, Corinth, Thessalonica, and some of the other biblical opportunities. If you would like to find more information about that, we're going to have an interest meeting on May 25th. That's Wednesday, May 25th at 6.30 p.m. here at the church. I'll bring the two people in and they'll give you information so that you can then begin to save your resources and have an opportunity to make a few payments so that you could afford to go. Amen? Amen? If you're interested now, you know to notice I'm waiting to after the pandemic is over. And we're looking ahead in 2023, but I can't wait to 2023 to get us ready. We got to put them nickels together. So if you are interested in, in a trip like this, then be here at the church on May 25th, Wednesday evening, 
at 6.30 p.m. And we're going to talk about this particular trip following the footsteps of the Apostle Paul. That's been one of my dreams for a while now. And I want to be able to do that in fulfillment. It, it just strengthens the, the biblical knowledge when you can actually go to the places that these events have occurred. And I walked on the, on, I didn't walk on the Sea of Galilee, but I walked on the shore. I rode on the Sea of Galilee. We baptized in the Jordan River. We really did. We went to the tomb of Jesus. We did a lot of stuff there. And it has just changed my whole understanding of biblical approaches to New Testament. And I just believe that a trip to follow the footsteps of the Apostle Paul would just enhance a Christian's study and understanding of biblical truth. So we'll talk about that coming soon. Before I, I introduce, uh, we have guests this morning and we want to give each one of them an opportunity to introduce themselves and to share something with you. We certainly want to ask your prayers for the Johnson family. The home going for Mrs. Helen Johnson will be this Saturday, uh, May 21st at 12 noon at the St. Joseph Missionary Baptist Church. Ms. Johnson is the sister of Mrs. Nettie Mitchell and Mrs. Joyce Gray's grandmother. She's also related to Tina Killings, Tina and Marlon, and grandmother to Christopher Haygood and Jackson Haygood, and the aunt to Darrell, uh, Deacon Darrell and Deaconess Regina Mitchell. And we're certainly praying for the Mitchell, Johnson, Haygood, families, all of them together. And we're asking God's blessing on each one. This morning at our midst, we have about four people who are offering themselves for public service. And as is our process, we give everybody an opportunity to speak. And so Stephanie Floyd, are you here? Stephanie is running for uh, Jefferson County Board of Education. I'll let them introduce themselves, but come on if you will. Marika Coleman, Sharita Venable, and Thomas Thrash. Did I see you too? If you're here, will you come to the, come this way? All right. My lady, tell us who you are and what you're doing. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, let's do that again. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Thank you for allowing me to come here this morning. First of all, my name is Stephanie Floyd. And I am your candidate for the Jefferson County Board of Education's District 3 seat. District 3 is comprised of Centerpoint, Pinson, Irondale, Fultondale, and I forgot somebody. Centerpoint, Pinson, Irondale, and Fultondale. I got them all in there. Um, I am actually a, a person that has graduated from Jefferson County. I graduated from Vestavia Hills High School. I'm a product of the county school system. My mother is actually an educator at Vestavia Hills High School and has now retired. My father also um, was an educator and he retired from the St. Clair County educational system. I continued my education and went on to get a Bachelor of Science degree from Jacksonville State University, which as you know is a state institution. I continued my education because education is a part of my genealogy, parents both educators, and attained a Master of Business Administration from an online institution, that being Walden University. And having education in my genealogy, I continued again with my pursuit of education to become the 2% of the population that attains doctorates. Uh, I started my doctoral candidacy with Walden University with a major in marketing. So you can see that education is something that's a part of me, it's in me. I'm passionate about education and I'm passionate about education for our students. Um, I have four children, three of which have graduated from county schools, different county schools. And I say have graduated, I have one graduating in one week and two days, but I'm not counting, right? 
So I have three that have graduated from county schools, and they're all different county schools, and that has given me a perspective that's different from the other candidates that are also running for this position because I've seen what education is like in the different schools, not only when I was a student, but as that as a parent as well. Not only have we studied school here in Jefferson County, and it sounds like we've been in a bubble, but actually we're very fortunate, and when I say we, I mean me and my family, in that we've had the opportunity to be educated outside of this bubble called Jefferson County. We've actually been educated in, uh, outside of the state, in public, and private institutions, and we've had the honor of being educated outside of the country. Okay. So my perspective is quite different from that of other candidates that are also running for this position, in that I see life or education from that as a child that had parents who were educators, as a student myself, and as a parent who has children that have been across the globe to uh, actually be stud have studies in education. I want you to also know that Alabama is ranked number one in preschool and has in the country for the last 16 years. And I wanna repeat that to you because some of you are looking at me like, no, she's confused. But we have been number one in the country for 16 years but we only allow 42% of our people to participate in that program. Tell them to vote for you, baby. Yeah. We, we are not investing in our children, and we can't expect quality products when we're not investing yeah. in our students. It's important that we put our investments into our students so that we can get good quality products out of them. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they can't compete with those that are across the globe that are also competing for the same jobs that we are. Again, my name is Stephanie Floyd. I am running for District 3. My goal is to make District 3 strong, and I would appreciate you going out on May the 24th, invite your friends, your families, your neighbors, your coworkers, your enemies, anybody, to go out and cast their vote because it's very, very important. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. All right? Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I am State Representative Marika Coleman, and I'm running for Senate District 19. It's an open seat. But, Pastor, I'm like you. I love going to church. Mm -hmm. This is not playtime for me. I love the Lord. And that's who, who I take with me. Every time I walk into the doors of the Alabama legislature, I put the full armor of God on me when I walk through those hallways. I am asking for your vote on May 24th. I'm going to be decent in order, Pastor, and ask for the vote right away. We're going to go for the gold on May 24th and vote Marika Coleman, Senate District 19. But just a, just a few things about me. I, I, I want to take this opportunity also to thank the pastor. I was here in January, and I gave a testimony about what happened to me personally and my family, the loss that we had because of covid me losing my husband and pastor, you walk me to my car, if you remember that. And you really encourage me. So I want to thank the man of God today in front of his congregation for how he poured into me in my time of need. But that sense of service actually took me out of the grief that I was dealing with. Of course, my love of God, but that sense of service took me out of that grief. I am a legislator. I've been a legislator for 20 years. I'm a lawyer. I'm a college professor at the Miles College. The Miles College. But my most important role is that of mother to Alexia and Xavier. So also when I talk on that microphone in the Alabama House of Representatives, I remember whose I am, but I also remember that I am Paulette and Bruce's daughter and Alexia and Xavier's mother. So I try to make them proud. In November, you will vote on a measure that was a part of my work, and that is removing the racist language from the Alabama State Constitution, that document that is rooted in white supremacy. So on May 24th, I'm asking you to go for the goal, vote for Marika Coleman. Google me, though. The best indicator of what a person will do for you is what they've already done. Again, Marika Coleman, Senate District 19, May 24th. Thank you so much. Thank you for being with us. All right. All right. All right. Good morning. 
Greater Shallow Missionary Baptist Church. And thank you for your listening ears this morning, and thank you, Pastor, for this opportunity. My name is Thomas Thrash, and I currently serve you as your district court judge at Place 11. Now, you've trusted me with your vote in 2018, and I say to you this morning that that trust was well placed. The service that I provide you is, is the best service that, that Jefferson County can get. And I'm proud to say that if you will consider me and elect me for circuit court judge at place 12 on May 24, 2022, you'll continue to get the same service. You'll get, continue to get the same dedication and commitment because that's what you deserve, the best candidate for the job. Now, where I am at district court place 11 is a criminal assignment. I handle over 250 cases per week. Everything from attempted murder down to the simplest traffic ticket, with the exclusion of murder and capital murder. But if once elected to place 12, I will be handling those cases involving murder and capital murder. And those are very serious cases. I have no jury trials as a district court judge, but as your circuit court judge, I will be conducting jury trials. So I say to you, your vote is important. I come to you and ask for your prayers and your support, but more importantly, your vote. Vote Thomas Thrash on May 24th because I am the right candidate. May 24th is the right time. I'm for the people for you, Jefferson County. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank each one of the persons that offer themselves for public service. We certainly appreciate you coming by and letting us know who you are and what you're doing. And we challenge our people to govern yourselves accordingly. As we say, we don't endorse, but we do give people an opportunity to express themselves. Let's crank it up again with worship. Amen. We got we got offering coming, and then we got morning message following that. Uh, when you give this morning, we walk. We're still in a little bit of a, um, a pandemic protocol, so rather than passing the basket, we ask you to just walk up here, and there are four different buckets up here. Three of them are labeled for areas of our building fund that we have been working on, and one is for your general offering. Whichever bucket you drop it in, drop something. We appreciate it so very much. So we're going to pray now, and then after we've prayed, our choir's going to sing, Be Steadfast. And then as the choir is singing, you may walk and give. Father, thank you today for the blessing of life. Thank you for the privilege we have to be recipients of your blessings. The financial ones, the gifts, the retirements, the income, whatever ways you choose and have chosen to bless us, we thank you. And now we come with thanksgiving to return these thanks with these portions. May each one be received and cleansed and used in ways that bring glory and honor to your name and blessings to others. And may you, Father, return many more blessings to the life of every giver. We ask it now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our sanctuary choir, come on, put your hands together for them as they come now.
so very hard So much so I can't see the Lord But when I need Him Knowing right from wrong I can't get enough courage To stand there and be strong But when I kneel I kneel down to pray I hear the small voice of Jesus Somebody needed to be encouraged to hang on in there. Father, we thank you now for this privilege that we have to come to this moment in worship where your word comes to us. We thank you for the celebratory moments of praise. We thank you for songs. We thank you for prayers. We thank you 
every aspect of service today, the fellowship together. But now, Lord, we need a word to help us to live. And we pray as we come to this moment that you will lift again your human out of self. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. Speak to us and through us in this moment. And bless now the words that are in our mouth and the meditations that are on our heart. That it may be acceptable in your sight. Lord, with you there is a word. Without you there is no word. Pray that you would have your way. Minister to us now. Do as you will. Speak, Lord, your servants are listening. Thank you in advance for what you're going to say, what you're going to give, and the lives that are going to be changed as a result. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to begin a three-part series this morning on a subject that I think is going to be important to us in this day and time. And I want to direct your attention to the book of Philippians, the uh, fourth chapter. Philippians chapter 4. I hate to start at the end of a book, but it's important that we launch. Verses 10 through 12. Uh, I think I can see it. I left my glasses on the floor. Thank you, sir. All right. Always help to have a little help, doesn't it? That's much better. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein you were also careful, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be filled and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. This is the word of God for the people of God. I want to preach this morning from the question. Is there a secret to being satisfied in life? Is there a secret to being satisfied in life? I'm not going to make you wait to the end. I'm going to tell you right now, yes. And the secret is contempt. You've got to learn how to be content to be satisfied in life. You've got to learn how to be all right. You've got, you got to know how to be all right when you got it going. And you've got to know how to be all right when it's not going your way. And, 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 and what I like about the passage, the Apostle Paul, the very guy I was talking about earlier, whose footsteps we want to follow says, I have learned the secret, and I want to let you in on it, because I believe that you can be in a different place than many are in right now. Got to be honest with you, there are so many people who are dissatisfied with life. And, and, and the world and the culture that we live in encourages the dissatisfaction. The world that we live in don't want people to be happy, don't want people to be all right. As a, as a matter of fact, television is our number one producer of the discontentment that we feel. You, you, you don't realize that television is not there for the programs. Television is there for the commercials. And the commercials are there to make you unhappy with what your life is all about. 
No car, yeah, I'm not satisfied with it, I gotta have a new one. A car that would cause a skinny girl to sit on it. If you're a guy. They make you feel like that. Food that you eat is not good enough, it's not nutritious enough. The body type that you have, not good enough. The color of your hair, the color of your eyes, the color of your skin, nothing is ever right according to television and is designed to make you dissatisfied with your life. As, as, as a matter of fact, culture now says you all not to be satisfied with nothing. You all not to be satisfied with the house you live in. You all not to be satisfied with the spouse you have. You all not to be satisfied with the boo you call boo. Get you a new one. Consequently, because people are dissatisfied, we are discontented and not happy. But the Apostle Paul comes to the forefront today with good news. And he says, I have, I have learned the secret of how to be content. See, 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 the word content is a good word. It's, it's a Bible word. Uh, in the book of Psalms, Psalm 36, as a matter of fact, verse 7 and 8, listen to what it says. How excellent is thy loving kindness, O God. Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadows of thy wings. They shall abundantly be satisfied. See, the word satisfied is a synonym for the word contentment. When you are satisfied, you are contented. When you are contented, you are satisfied. It means you're all right. I can take things as they are. Now, what makes this so amazing is the writer, Paul. And the time that he's writing this letter is a time when if ever there was someone who should not have been satisfied, it would have been Paul. Those of you who are biblical scholars would recognize that Paul at this point is a prisoner in Rome. He's under house arrest. He's chained 24 hours to a Roman soldier. He does not have the privilege of coming and going as he wants. He does not have the privilege of privacy in using the restroom to dispel himself or to relieve himself of naturalness. He cannot eat his food and enjoy it on his own. He can't lick his lips. He can't wipe his face with his hands. He is chained to a soldier. Yet, this man says, in spite of all of that, I've learned how to be satisfied. I've learned how to be content. Man, what a good thing to learn. You know, I have a theory. And my theory is that people, the more they have, the more dissatisfied that they become. See, it's an economic principle. When I was take, taking economics, young lady, and in economics, I learned that, that as older wants are satisfied, new and greater wants are desired. So you never really are satisfied. Come on, ladies. Come up here. Help me preach this thing. All you say when you go shopping is, I just want a dress. And then you get a dress. You say, but I got to get some shoes to go with it. And then I got to get the accessories to match. And no matter what it is, they, oh, I got to have a ride that's Put this on display. Wait a minute, I got to change the color of my hair. I got to get me some new eyelet. Oh. And the list goes on. Because as older ones are satisfied, newer and greater ones are, are, are desired. But, but, but contentment is, 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 a, is a beautiful word. Let, let me tell you where, where Paul comes from. It was ever before Paul. It was David, not only the writer of the 36th Psalm, but David, the writer of Psalm 23. You know what he said there? He said, Lord, 
is what? My shepherd and I what? Shall not want. When the Lord is your shepherd, you can be all right because you don't have any need of anything. Is that right? Is that what Jesus said when Jesus was teaching in the earthly ministry when he was on the earth? When he was giving that famous sermon on the mount in Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7? He said, listen, which of you by being anxious, by being worried, can add one cupid to his stature? You know, he said, consider the lilies of the field and the birds of the air. He said, they don't work anywhere. I mean, you know, birds don't gather in the barns. He said, but yet your heavenly father feed is them. And he said, lilies don't, don't, they don't spin, they don't do anything, but yet not even Solomon in all of his glory could outdress a lily. And, and he said, listen, and if they could find contentment, can't we? Listen, I, I, I had to just check myself this week. I did, I had to check myself. Because there was a little problem that occurred in the house. You know, every time, every now and then, something will go wrong. And a little something went wrong. And I was living. And I had to check myself. I was what in the world is wrong with you? Here was a man that just had a bed to sleep in, a little water to drink, a little food to eat every now and then, and found himself totally satisfied and here you are in a mega house and you fussing what's wrong with you are you hearing me I think that's the truth in this society altogether I'm not the only one my brothers and sisters you know yourself you look at yourself and you beat yourself up Look at these old rows. Look at this old hair. Look at this. It won't do right. Won't lay right. I just need to just cut it all off. And then you cut it all off. And tomorrow people see you and they call you Rapunzel because you got more hair. Discontent. Dissatisfied. Dissatisfied with the jobs we have. Dissatisfied with the communities we live in. Dissatisfied with everything in our life. But is there a secret that can be obtained that can change all of that? And Paul says, oh yes it is. He said, I've learned it. And I don't mind sharing it with you. See, the word secret in, in the Greek is, is the same word that is used in initiations. I know about initiations. In, in 1973, I pledged the fraternity. And I learned some secret stuff. When I, 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 did, I couldn't learn it until after I was initiated. But once I was initiated, then I learn secret stuff. <laughs> Paul, Paul said I had to go through it. He said I, I, I had to be whipped. I, I had to be tried. I had to be fit for tired. I had to be taken through the process. But in the process, I, I, I passed the initiation. And, and now that I'm in, he said I know the secret. So somebody said, Pastor, please tell us. <laughs> said, don't, 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 don't mess with us. Tell us. Tell us what it was. I, I got to help you first before I, I, I tell you. A little background because some of you would know that, that the Apostle Paul had been instrumental in the relationship with these people that he's writing to. These are the people that live in the city of Philippi, one of them cities I want to visit. Philippi was in Macedonia. It was a, a, a major town, and the Apostle Paul came to Macedonia. And when he came to Macedonia, they didn't hold up a welcome sign and say, Welcome, Paul. No, there was a slave girl that lived in that city. And, and she had an evil spirit in her. And, and she would follow Paul and Silas every day, and she would talk at him. She would say, I know who you guys are. You're 
You are the representatives of the most high God. And Paul became a little vexed with a girl. And one day he turned around and he called the devil out of the girl. Healed her, saved her life. But her manager got mad because he lost his trophy for making money. And they had Paul drugged before the magistrates and stripped and beat and put in prison. But at midnight, God sent a revival. The prison doors opened, and Paul and Silas sang and prayed, and the jailer was converted. See, all of that happened on the night the jailhouse rock. <laughs> and, and, and a little church sprung up there in Philippi. And in that church, they had a little sum-sum because they had a woman there whose name was Lydia. Lydia, was a, she had her own business. She was a seller of purple. And, 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 and others, man, they, they, it was a Roman city, so they had a little wealth. And everywhere Paul went after he was released from jail there, the people at Philippi always sent Paul a little something. When he went to, to the next city of Thessalonica, they sent him something. When he went to Berea, they sent him something. When he went to Athens, they sent him something. But now, listen carefully, it's been 10 years since the people of Philippi has heard anything from the Apostle Paul. And now they learn that Paul is in prison in Rome and so they send him a love gift through one of the members of their church a man whose name was Epiroditus and when Epiroditus shows up with the gift man it just caused Paul hard to explode again with joy so you know what people do when they're grateful they did what these people did this morning they send cards but Paul wrote a whole letter, and he wrote a letter to the people of Philippi to say thank you. Now, I'm going to talk about that more late next week, but let me, let me just help you see what he said. He said, listen, I, I appreciate the gift. He said, not that I speak because I'm in want. Not that I was begging for it. Not that I was at the mercy of and needed it all because, see, I've learned something. I've learned that in whatsoever state I'm in, I learned how to be satisfied. I've learned how to be content. I know what it is to enjoy a big meal. And I know what it is to suffer hunger. I know what it is to walk around with my pocket loaded. And I know what it is to blow dust. He said, I know what it is to have some Benjamins. And I know what it is to squeeze Washington so tight that when he come out, he have to blink his eye. He said, I know how to be, when, what it is to put on a fine suit. And he said, I know what it is to have to go down in short pants. He said, I know what it is to wear gaiters. And I know what it is to wear talking shoes. He said, I've had it all in my life. And I've learned that no matter what situation I'm in, I've learned how to be all right. So, so, so now that you know where Paul was, let me help you understand his secret. How was this man able to be all right under the circumstance in which he was living? Here it is, number one. Num num number one, Paul learned to put his confidence in the providential care and provision of God. Wait, wait, wait. I, I know I preach fast. He learned to put his confidence in the providential care and provision of God. Now, now, somebody looking at me funny. What that mean? Now, let, let, let me tell you. There's a difference between providence and a miracle. See, a miracle is where God steps in and temporarily rearranges the things in his creation. 
to allow certain things to happen. You remember Jesus was, 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 was coming to get his disciples one night. They were in trouble on the, sh on the sea. And he, he walked on the water. God just temporarily made a highway on the water so Jesus could walk through. That was a miracle. It was a miracle when Jesus told Peter, put, the, put your net on the other side. Because God had sent a message, he had sent a tweet, he had sent a text to the fish and told him to go on the other side, the net would be waiting on you over there. That's a miracle where God temporarily rearranges circumstance. But uh, the providence is where God takes 50 million circumstances and work every detail out for my good. <laughs> now, that's providence. And what Paul understood was that God goes behind my back and he works all things out and make them come together for my good. No matter what, even if it's not good, I know that God know how to bring good out of every situation that I'm in. So listen, listen, when Paul writes to the Philippians, he says to them, he said, listen, I'm not upset with you because it's been 10 years. He said, it's been 10 years because God just hadn't given you an opportunity to do anything about it. But now here 10 years later, God has orchestrated the circumstances and you have remembered me and you have sent somebody with a little something. He says, so I'm all right. I'm satisfied. I'm good because I know that it wasn't your fault that you had, I hadn't heard from you in 10 years. It was just that God just had not brought the opportunity to your well-being for me. May I help you understand? When you live like that, when you understand that every morning the sun is up and no matter what the day brings, it's going to be all right. When you understand that if something don't go my way, that's all right too. That I don't have to get upset, that I don't have to pull the hair out of my head, that I don't have to cuss somebody, that I don't have to shoot somebody, that I don't have to get angry with somebody. Because all I have to do is patiently wait on God. Because if it's for me, God's going to work it out. And it's going to show up. And it's going to show up when I need it most. Anybody ever had God to work on you? Some circumstances passed you by. You thought it was all messed up. But then just at the right time, God snatched the door open. Because in his own providential time, and well-being, he opened the door, and it was just your time? Oh, Lord. Can I talk about this for a moment? Listen, when I was teaching in the school, I was band director of Lincoln School, and they, they told me I was an elementary school band teacher, and they told me the next high school come open will be yours. Well, the next high school came open was Banks High School, and they passed me by, and they put somebody else. And I was upset. I said, Lord, do you see these folk done lied to me? They told me I was going to be next, and they have passed me by. Well, two weeks later, what I didn't know, I got a call to come to the central office. And they said, listen, we want to send you to Smith as assistant principal. I went to Smith as assistant principal. The next year, I was made principal of Powderly. Eight years later, I was made principal of Arrington. Five years later, I was made principal of Woodlawn. Two years later, I was sent to the central office. Eight years later, I retired, and banks had closed as a high school, and the man that was still there never had a band. Look at the Lord. <laughs> Providentially. Providentially provide, making all of the circumstance work for me. Listen, I don't worry when I cry because I know that an invisible hand will dry my tears. I don't worry when people mistreat me. I don't have to try to get back at nobody because I know that God got it all. If the door is closed in my face, I just keep walking 
because I know in the ebb and flow of time, God will open the door. And when God opens the door, baby, can't nobody close it. And when God opens the window of heaven and pours out a blessing, I don't have room enough to receive it. My God will supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. That's providence. And Paul could lay there at night with his arm chained to a Roman soldier and sleep good because when he woke up, he was going to preach. He was going to preach to the soldiers and he was going to preach to the people who came to visit him and the gospel was going to go forward. He didn't need a big pulpit. Now he wrote 14 books of the New Testament, and you and I are still benefiting from Paul's work, but the man was content. He was all right. A little something to eat, a little something to drink, a little place to lay my head, and I'm good. Paul trusted and depended on the providential care and provision of God. And when you learn that secret, you can learn how to be all right. Listen, somebody in here worried now, how you gonna pay your bills? Didn't God pay them last month? Did he pay them two months ago? Did he pay them four years ago? Did he pay them five years ago? Look at you today. You didn't even think you'd be here today, but look at God. He dusted you off, brushed you up, stood you up. Put a new song in your heart. Put running in your feet, clapping in your hand. He worked it out. You don't know how he worked it out, but you know he worked it out. But not only did Paul learn to trust and put his confidence in the providential care of God, but secondly, in his secret understanding, Paul learned how to get along with just a little bit. Uh oh. Man, that's so, that's, that, that's so different from today's world. See, Paul could not have been a, 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 a tele-evangelist in today's world. See, because he, he was not a health, wealth, and prosperity preacher. Paul talked about getting along with a little. The boy knew what it was like. He, he knew what it was like to just have a little bit. He told, he told, he told the, the, the Corinthians one time, he said, listen, I, he said, I'm a, I'm a preacher and I got a right to live out of the gospel. He said, but I'm not going to put it on you. He said, I'm going to work with my own hands. And so Paul made tents by day. And he made tents at night so that he could support himself. He understood. Man, this man for 25 years was a traveling preacher. And where he went, there were times, man, Paul's life was in peril. He was run out of town. He was beat up. He was left for dead. He was drugged. All kind of situations. But he learned how to get along with a little. Can I help you understand that why I can enjoy the much today is because there was a time in my life when there was but what? A little? Anybody, I know, I know y'all too sanctified and too dignified this morning. But I remember when a syrup sandwich was good. <laughs> Come on, talk to me, somebody. I remember when peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for lunch was a staple. I remember when tuna fish was all right. I remember when sardines and crackers was a delicacy. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Help me help. You know, see, I, I, I was almost late this morning because I had to decide who one of those 30, 50 suits that I wanted to put on. You understand? But I remember a day when Sunday morning came, there was one pair of black pants. There was one white shirt. There was one string tie. There was one pair of shoes that were called your Sunday go to meeting shoes. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? I, I remember when mama fixed whatever Sunday dinner was. It wasn't no, I don't want none of that then baby, you were going to be hungry because nine others lined up to say, I'll take his. It wasn't no going to McDonald's. It wasn't no, I want chicken nuggets. It wasn't, I want french fries. No, it was whatever it was. And if you didn't eat it, 
Somebody else took it. And if you hesitated too long, you were messed up, buddy, because seven, eight, nine more were sticking their plate out. I know what it is. I know what it's like. You understand? I know what it is to make ice cream on the back porch and to ring the thing. I know what it is to hang clothes on the line before washer and dryer. I know what it is to not have a dishwasher. We had dishwashers. It was Michael, it was Ray, it was Charles, it was Elvia, it was Bubba, it was Janice. They were all dishwashers. No put no dishes in this in a dishwasher and turning on a button. I know what it's like. Are you hearing me? Is there anybody in the house this morning that understand what I'm talking about? Paul said, I learned the secrecy. I learned how to get along with a little bit. And, and, and when the Lord began to add a little bit more, man, I thought I was walking on cotton. <laughs> do, you, do you understand, man? I remember, man, when $20, man, cut up in my pocket like a government mule. <laughs> I went away from home to college for the first time and my mother took me to college and she dropped me off at the dorm and she gave me a lot of money I had $30 <laughs> and I didn't know when or where the next ones were coming from so I squeezed them $30 for a long time. Talking about college, these college kids today got refrigerators and microwaves and everything in the room. Listen, our refrigerator was the window ledge. We kept juice cold outside on the ledge of the window. Wasn't no such thing as a microwave. You had a hot stove in your, uh, in your room, you were going to get suspended and sent home. But we put towels under the door. <laughs> Y'all don't know. <laughs> Some people put towels under the door for other activity. We put towels. <laughs> oh, y'all want to play like it. You want to pretend in here this morning. But I came to preach the word today. I know what it's like to have a little bit. And I know what it's like to have much. And in both states, I learned how to be all right. I know how to be all right and to walk with my head up when I got it going. And I know how to be all right and walk with my head when I'm broke as Job Turkey. I know how to be all right no matter what. I know how to be all right when people are with me. I know how to be all right when nobody is with me. I know how to be all right when the crowd is cheering. I know how to be all right when the crowd is crying, crucify him. I know how to be all right no matter what the situation is because I've enjoyed it both ways. And when you know how to have it both ways, you know how to enjoy and to be satisfied with your life. Man, you got to know. Now, some of y'all like to pretend today, but you remember when you were living in the project? Man, I remember laying in the house, man, and looking up and could see the stars. And it wasn't because I was outside either. I could just peep through and see what was going on up there. I remember bunk beds. That was that, man, a king side bed, never heard of it. <laughs> Knew what bunk beds was, eight, nine, ten children in the house. You had to share a bed. Nobody had a bed by themselves. I know some of you only children, only child folk are saying, what is he talking about? <laughs> Those of you that came from a, long, from a large family, you understand. You understand, baby, what it was like. But Paul said, I know what it's like. And I've learned that in whatsoever state, I've learned how to be satisfied. When you can learn that, your complaints in life will go down. When you learn that in life, your appreciation for who God is and for what God does increases. 
I don't want to be an ungrateful person. Ingratitude is a sin. It's a serious sin to say to God that I'm not appreciative of what you have blessed me with. Man, if Paul could be satisfied with just being chained to Roman soldiers, just a little here, a little there, what in the world do I have to complain about? But this society in which we live is the producer of the discontentment that we experience. The society is not God that says you can't have. God is the one telling you, I take care of everything. The whole world waits on me to open my hand. But it's the society who say you ought not be happy. You ought not be satisfied. You deserve more. No, if God gave you what you deserve, you'd be in hell. But Paul learned how to put his confidence in the providential backdoor working of God. And he learned, secondly, how to get along with just a little. It's really about six of these. I'm just going to give you three this morning and come back next time. And we're going to talk a little more. Paul learned, thirdly, how to live above his circumstances. So that his circumstances did not determine how he felt about it. See, when you make demands of life, when, when you make demands of other people that you don't know who you're messing with, and I deserve to be treated better, and I deserve this, and I deserve that, and you start making demands. Now, you are now empowering people to, to control how you feel about what they do to you, <coughs> and what they say to you, and how you respond. Paul learned how to live above his circumstance so that no matter what his current situation was, he was all right because the, the situation or the circumstances that he was living in didn't determine how he felt. He was already all right. He was already all right there. Now, now you got to understand, when you look at Paul's life, look, let me just walk you through a few of these verses. Uh, um, Acts chapter 16 yeah he goes into Philippi he in Silas he put to shame he's beat up he's stripped and he's thrown into jail not just jail under the jail and he's fastened in stocks and in chains and then after the, 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 the jailer was converted they wanted to just let him sneak out of town Paul said no y'all whip me in the open you're going to bring me back in the open and apologize in the open. All right, Paul leaves Philippi, and he goes down to Thessalonica. Well, the rabble risers find out he's in Thessalonica. They come down there. They stir up the whole city. Before you know it, Paul is drugged out in the streets again. He's beat and left half dead. Uh, you think that's enough? Paul goes on. He knows what it is to suffer hunger. He knows what it is to have Christian people turn their backs on him. Friends, so-called friends, everybody is all against him. Judaizers rising up, hateful people, haters, hellish people all coming against him. Then they decide that, okay, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna arrest him and throw him in prison again. And they put Paul in prison in Caesarea Philippi with the intent of killing him. Paul found out that they had a plot going on for his life. The, uh, the, the, the governor, Felix and Festus, came. They wanted to send, send Paul back to Jerusalem. Paul said, no, I ain't going. He said, I'd rather go to Rome. They said, okay, you want to go to Rome? We'll put you on a ship to go to Rome. He'd get on a boat to go to Rome. What happened? The ship run aground. He's shipwrecked night and day in the deep. He's lost. He's hungry. There's nothing to eat. They're throwing cargo. He got bit by a snake. Everything happened to the man. The man understood. Man, y'all can't talk to me about nothing. He tells these same Philippians in chapter 1, for me to live is Christ. If I die, that's the worst thing that can happen. But even if I die, I gain, I get a hold of heaven. 
when you got a man like that, how in the world are you going to do something with somebody like that who lives above his circumstance? Withhold my stimulus check. That's not going to stop me from praising God. Don't praise my name. Don't put me on the program. That's not going to stop me from praising God. Don't call my name. You're not going to make me feel bad. Talk about my children if you want to. That's not going to change anything for me. I know who I am, and I'm all right in who I am. I'm comfortable in my skin. I was comfortable long before I came to the pulpit, and I'll be comfortable as long as God got breath in my body. And even if he take it out of my body, I'll be all right because I'll be with Jesus in the place where the wicked will cease from troubling and the weary will be at rest, where every day will be Sunday and the Sabbath will have no end. I'm all right if my head hurts. I'm all right if my leg hurts. I'm all right if my chest hurts. I'm all right if I got money problems. I'm all right if my family is not doing well. I've learned. I've learned. I've learned how to be all right. I've learned how to be broke. I've learned how to be filled up. I've learned how to have a little bit. I've learned how to enjoy much. I know what it is to have filet mignon. I know what it is to have lobster. I also know what it is to have neck bones and oxtails and pig feet and pigtails. I know how to be all right with that. I know how to have chicken breasts, but I also know how to enjoy chicken wings. I just want somebody to be encouraged today. I want you to know it's not based on what, how the world comes your way. Everybody may not lay down at your feet. Everybody, everybody might not call you Mr. Wonderful or Miss Wonderful. People may not give you any credit for the things that you do. They might not ever acknowledge what God is doing in you, with you, and through you, but still, you can be content. You don't have to be dissatisfied because somebody else didn't want to recognize who you are. You know, I know a lady once, man, she was just angry. And they asked her why she was angry. And she said, they ain't want to call my name. They ain't want to know who I am. Well, it doesn't even matter. God knows who you are. God knows your name. God knows your uprising. And God knows your down city. God knows your thoughts are far off. God knows everything that there is to know about you. And if it's all right with him, it's got to be all right with me. Let me close with an illustration I've shared with you many times. There was a blind girl who was seated on the front porch. And she was seated on the front porch with her daddy. And a friend of the family decided that he was going to play a trick on the young blind girl. And he came up on the porch and he snatched the young girl and he put her under his arms and he ran off the porch and he ran down the street with the girl under his arms. And he noticed that after a little while, a block or so, the girl wasn't kicking, she wasn't screaming, she wasn't fighting, she wasn't protesting in any kind of way. And the friend stopped and he put the girl down and he said, do you know who I am? And she said, no. He said, then why aren't you worried? Why aren't you crying? Why aren't you hollering? She said, because I know my father saw you. And if it was all right with him, then it's all right with me. And that's what you got to understand, that your father in heaven sees all. He sees you when you rise up in the morning. He sees you when you sit down. He sees the games people play. He sees the tricks that they try to put you in. And he knows how to stop it. But if he choose not to stop it and allow the game to go on just a little while long, then let it be all right with you. Learn how to be satisfied. Learn how to be content. Learn how to be okay. 
But whatever your circumstances are, yes, there is a secret to being satisfied in life. And yes, it is called contentment. So be encouraged, my brother. Be encouraged, my sister. Be encouraged. No matter who you are, no matter where you are, no matter what's going on, God will make it all right. That's what providence will do. Doors of the church open. Doors of the church open. Maybe somebody here this morning who would come. Come by letter. Come on your own Christian experience. Come as a candidate for baptism. Doors of the church open. Anytime during the singing of the song. Give God your heart. Give one of these your hand. And let's begin a walk. Let's begin a talk. Somebody may be dissatisfied. Because somebody said something to you years ago. Somebody called you a name. Somebody told you you wouldn't amount to anything. But don't believe that today. Let God speak into your life. Let God work his magic. Let God work his plan. He said through the prophet Jeremiah, I know the plans I have for your life. Plans for good and not evil. To give you a future and a hope. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. No matter what's going on. Doors open. No matter what's going on. Somebody need that this morning. If you need encouragement, just lift your hand.
we all need. We all need to be reminded of the providence of God that he is working it out. We need to learn how to be satisfied with a little and when he brings more, wonderful is gravy. And you've got to learn how to live above your circumstance. Don't let your circumstance decide whether or not you gonna be all right. Be all right anyway. And when you're all right anyway, no matter what happens, you can be content. And that's the word for you today. Next Sunday, we just did mention, I heard it in the announcement about the music in the park down at Roosevelt. This same choir is gonna sing too. Alvin Garrett is gonna play, but our sanctuary choir will sing. At uh, the park next Sunday afternoon, and so we'll talk more about it uh, as we get a schedule of what happened this week. But God bless you, God loves you. Listen, I want to minister to you in this little song right here. It's called a solid rock. You know, we're gonna stand, we're gonna go home, but I want you to stand with me. Come on. My hope is built on nothing less. And Jesus' blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweet explain But only lean on Jesus' name On Christ the solid rock I stand All of the cross is sinking sand All of the cross is sinking sand When Darkness seems to hide its face. I rest on His unchanging grace. Every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the Everybody on Christ, come on, sing it with me. On Christ the song, let rock I stand. All of the world is sinking sand. All of the world is sinking sand. Father, we thank you today for this time in your presence. We thank you to know that we can be satisfied, that we can be content, that we can be all right. Help us to put our confidence, our trust in your providential provision and care. Go behind our back. You don't need our permission. Just take over and work your work in our life. Help us to be satisfied with little, Help us to stop making demands of life and making demands of ourselves, but to be willing to be submissive to your will. And Father, we pray that you would teach us to live above our circumstance so that they cannot betray us, they cannot interfere with our contentment, with our peace. And may we, like the Apostle Paul, know that in all things, we'll be all right because you're the one who will supply all of our needs according to your riches in glory through Christ Jesus our Lord. Bless the sick among us this week. Bless the bereaved families. Bless those, Lord, who are traveling. Bless these who offer themselves for public office. May you protect them and guide them through all of their campaign work. And to God, may you help us to know what is your divine will. Dismiss us now from this place, but never from your holy presence. We ask again now that the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, that he will rest, rule, and abide with each one of us, your children. Until we meet again, God's people said amen.
Amen, amen. God bless you. See you next time.